Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going through the topic of density. So here are a few things that I want to cover today and uh, we'll begin the video. So the first thing about density is that uh, the formula is mass divided by volume. So the mass of an object divided by its volume equals the density. Now, depending on what sort of units you use for mass and volume, um, that will give you the units of density. So for example, you've got uh, here, I've used mass as grams and volume as uh, centimeters cubed. And as a result of that, density equals uh, grams per centimeters cubed. But you could have easily used kilograms for mass and uh, meters cubed for the volume. And in which case, uh, the density is going to be kilograms per meters cubed instead. So just be aware that you have to be very consistent uh, with the units, okay? So whatever you, units you use for the uh, mass and the units you use for the volume, uh, that will determine what the units will be for the density. And that applies to any sort of formula that you use. Uh, the units that you use for the calculations will result in the units that you get uh, once you complete that calculation. Uh, for example, if you had something like um, because we looked at speed and stuff before, right? So for example, uh, because, you know, speed equals uh, distance divided by time. If we use distance as meters and time as seconds, which we often do, the unit for speed becomes meters per second, okay? Which is also equivalent to meters per second to the power of negative one. Okay, uh, but then you could have always uh, also used some other units. For example, you could have gone for, say, distance as uh, kilometers divided by uh, time as minutes, right? And if you use this particular, these particular units in the calculation for speed, for example, then the units for speed would become kilometers per minute. Okay, but generally the standard uh, is to use that one there. And it's pretty much the same thing for density. Um, we usually have, let's get rid of that. Density equals mass divided by volume. And typically speaking, we either use grams and we use centimeters cubed, uh, or we often actually use kilograms and meters cubed. So generally speaking, uh, you'll either have the units being grams per centimeters cubed, or you could also have kilograms per meters cubed, uh, depending on what sort of units you've used for mass and volume. So that's just an important thing to understand there. But as we take a look at uh, the further slides um, beyond, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can physically uh, measure the density of various things. So let's take a look at uh, measuring the density of a liquid because this is the most easiest one. So what we wanna do is we want to get um, a weighing scale and we also want a measuring cylinder, okay? So imagine we've got uh, this little bowl of liquid um, and the liquid's density is what we want to measure, right? So you get a weighing scale and you put the measuring cylinder on top. Now the measuring cylinder is gonna weigh something, right? And we don't, you know, the, how much the measuring cylinder weighs is irrelevant to us and we don't want to know that. So when we put the measuring cylinder on the scale, the scale is going to read something and we're going to reset it back to zero. Okay, so now you've got the setup where you've got the measuring cylinder on top of the weighing scale and we've reset that back to zero. So the um, it's, going to, it's going to say zero now, right? Now what you want to do is pour the liquid that you want to measure into the measuring cylinder. And because the measuring cylinder's role is to measure the volume of liquid, you can easily take a look at the measuring cylinder and 
take a look at what the volume of the liquid that you've poured into the measuring cylinder is. Okay, so now we've got the volume of the liquid. Good. Now what will also happen is now that you've added liquid into the measuring cylinder, uh, that liquid is going to weigh something, right? So the weighing scale is going to show uh, a certain number, and that number is going to tell you how much the liquid actually weighs. And once that's done, you've actually got the mass of the liquid as well. So you've got the two key uh, measurements that you need to calculate the density. What you have is you've got the uh, you've got the volume of the liquid, which you've measured from the measuring cylinder, and you've also got the mass of the liquid, which you've measured, um, which is presented to you on the weighing scale. And by using the formula mass divided by volume, um, you can obtain the, you can obtain the, the, the density of the liquid, right? So for example, you've got this measuring cylinder, and it's on a scale. Initially, the scale is going to say 0, 0, 0.00, right? Uh, because we've zeroed it. Now you're going to add a bit of liquid into the measuring cylinder and imagine it sort of fills up to here, okay? Now that might measure, say, 600 centimeters cubed. And now that you've added the liquid in, what's going to happen is that scale is going to say something. Let's imagine it says something like, uh, uh, for the simplicity, 100 grams or something like that. Okay, now how do you calculate uh, density? Well, you've got uh, mass divided by volume. And so therefore, we've got 100 grams divided by the volume, 600 centimeters cubed. And so therefore, what do you get? Uh, you get 1 over 6. And if you were to put that into decimals, I don't have a calculator with me at the moment, but uh, I can easily bring it up. One divided by six is at zero point one six seven. Zero point one six seven. And what will the units be? Well, we use grams for mass and centimeters cubed for volume. So it will be grams per centimeters cubed. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So that's uh, pretty easy. What about uh, measuring the density um, of a regular solid? Now, by a regular solid, uh, we're talking about things like cubes and rectangles and you know things that have clear uh, regular edges that we can actually measure measure with a ruler. Okay, so, so. Again, what do we need when we want to calculate density? Think to yourself, well, we need mass and we need volume. And uh, again, the formula is mass divided by volume. Okay, so measure, what, what we need to do is if we've got a regular solid, we want to measure uh, its volume. And for example, if we've got like a cube, we know that the volume can be calculated using the formula height times width times length. Okay, and so therefore you just simply get a ruler and you take a measurement of all, all its edges and you get its height and you get its width and you get its length and then you calculate the volume of the, uh, of the solid by going height times width times length. Um, and then similar to what we did before, if we want to calculate the mass or something uh, or measure the mass of something, you just pretty much get a weighing scale and you chuck the object onto the weighing scale and see what the number comes up with. And again, now we have the mass okay which is the measurement that the weighing scale will give you and we've also got the volume which we manually calculated by getting the measurements of all the sides of the regular solid so going back to our little whiteboard imagine if we had say a solid something like this and imagine its height was uh, 10 centimeters length 
10 centimeters and width 10 centimeters okay so when you go um, height times length times width you're going to get 100 times 10 uh, so ultimately that's 1000 okay So that's 1000 centimeters cubed. Now that is the volume of our regular solid. Now we just need the mass of it, right? So you chuck that onto a scale and so the scale is going to look something like this and it's going to have something like that and you put the solid on it. So you can imagine that our little solid it's going to sort of sit something like that and the scale is going to tell you what the mass of the solid is uh, which might be say uh, 100 grams so again what is density density is mass over volume and in this case we've got 100 grams divided by 1000 centimeters cubed so that equates to 0 0.1 grams per centimeters cubed. Okay, so that would give you the final answer of the density of a regular solid. Okay. What about an irregular solid? And you know, an irregular solid just suggests that you can't really go and measure the sides with the rule and obtain volume anymore. You can't go and, you know, do width times length times height, which is what we did before to obtain the volume. Uh, you gotta, you got to try to measure the volume in another way, okay? So this is uh, where it gets a little bit uh, innovative, okay? So basically, again, measuring the mass uh, or, or the weight of a solid is very simple. Again, you just chuck it onto a weighing scale and it's going to give you a certain number of kilograms or grams or whatever, right? So that's fine. That's easy. Okay. But how do we measure the volume of this irregular solid? And this is actually pretty smart. What you need to do is get, um, you, you get a measuring cylinder and you add some water to the measuring cylinder and you check what the initial volume of the water is. Okay. And then what you do is you put the solid, the irregular solid, into the measuring cylinder. And as you might realize, when you put in or sunk something into a cylinder that already has liquid, the volume of that solid is actually going to sort of push the liquid upwards, right? And so you submerge the solid into the water, and then you check what the final volume of the water is inside the cylinder. Now, the difference between those two volumes is actually the volume of the solid, because what happens is the volume of the solid actually sort of displaces uh, the liquid, and that pushes the liquid upwards, and that difference is actually what the actual volume of the solid is. And so I'll give you a demonstration here, because it might be a little bit easier to visualize. So imagine if you've got this uh, measuring cylinder, and you have some liquid in here, right? So imagine this uh, was 500 centimeters cubed. That's the initial water that we put in, okay? But what if we add this solid rock, okay? So this rock is uh, the object that we want to measure the density for. And imagine we just chuck it in there. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, Logically, you'll expect the water to go upwards, right? And the reason for that is when you submerge that irregular solid, the volume of the solid will, well, the, the solid is actually going to displace the liquid to the same extent as the volume of the solid itself, okay? So given that it gets pushed up now, the liquid, you can check what the measurement says now. So this is the initial, and this is the final, and the final might be something like 700 centimeters cubed, right? So think about this. Um, did we add any extra water into the measuring cylinder? 
No, we haven't. So why did the water level go up from 500 to 700? And that's because we added the solid, which is occupying the difference between the two volumes. So final is 700, initial is 500. What is the difference? The difference, therefore, is 700 minus 500 equals 200 centimeters cubed. And that just happens to be the volume of this solid rock that we put in. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So therefore, we've actually now determined the volume of the solid, which is 200 centimeters cubed. And again, all you need to do to find the weight is go back to the weighing scale and chuck that solid rock on. And the scale is going to give you something like, say, uh, 200 grams or something, right? So we've got the mass of 200 grams. We've got the volume of 200 centimeters cubed. So mass divided by volume, 200 grams divided by 200 centimeters cubed is the density, which is one grams per centimeters cubed. Okay. So that is how we can determine the density of an irregular solid. A solid in which we can't just, you know, take out a ruler and measure the sides and things like that. So that's how we do it. So that's just a demonstration of uh, what you might expect. Uh, the, here's, here's the initial volume. When you put the rock in and you submerge it, the volume goes up and we did not add any water. So that difference just happens to be from the rock. So just before we finish, let's take a look at this idea of flotation or buoyancy. And you don't really need to know a lot about this, but all you need to know is that um, an object will float if it is less dense than the liquid it is placed in. Uh, meanwhile, an object will sink if it is more dense than the liquid it is placed in. So basically, if you put something in a liquid, if that object had to, happens to be more dense than the liquid that you've put it in, then it's going to sink. If it's less dense, then it is going to start to float on the liquid. Okay, so that's a fairly important thing that they might ask you in a quick multi-choice question or something like that. So, but I uh, hope that video helped and um, I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys.